Hello everyone and welcome. Um, we're going to go on to our next BandLab project here today. We're going to be focusing on the drum machine. Um, really basic fundamental lesson on how to use drum machines in um, digital audio workstations, in this case BandLab. So I'm already logged into BandLab. If you don't have a BandLab login, I suggest you go away and do that before you attempt this lesson. So I'm going to go ahead and click Create in the top right hand corner to start a new band lab song or track. Um, and then I'm going to choose Drum Machine right in the middle here. There we go. And when you fire up the drum machine, it gives you um, two pre-made drum beats all ready to go. They are this A and B. And basically if I hit play, it'll go through one and then it'll go through the other. Important point to note is that just one of these boxes or sections or bars as they are is one of these um, one of these bar panels down below that show us what the drum kit is doing. I'll just hit play and you'll probably realize that pretty quickly. So you can see there are two beats going on and it plays each beat, for example the A beat four times and then the B beat four times. And as I click on either beat you can see the actual beat that's being played changing slightly in our drum machine panel here below. And you would have noticed that it plays each one four times. Um, in our drum machine you can see that we've got all the instruments listed down the left hand side here that um, are attributed to that drum kit. So you can see that's a crash cymbal, hi-hat, closed hi-hat, a clapping sound, a edge of the snare, that's the rim or a rim shot um, where they hit the edge of the snare. Um, that's a normal snare hit. We've got a floor tom there and we've got a kick drum or bass drum there. And the kit that's being used is an 808 kit which is a really standard well-known kit in the music industry it's used a lot but if I hit this um, a drop down menu here on the side I can go from pads or drum kits and you can see I have all these different drum kits to choose from drum pads are uh, imagine it's it's like a synthesized version of a kit it's not a real kit usually it's something that's been put together on a computer um, used a lot in hip hop and electronic music and that sort of thing, whereas drum kits will sound more like a drum kit. All right, so if I click blues, for example, um, because I know that this one's going to sound a lot like a, a real actual drum kit, um, now we've got blues there. If I hit play, you can hear that it sounds like a, like a real kit being played. All right. Now the little dots obviously show which instrument is being played where, so if I follow along at the bottom you can see that we've got a bass drum there and I can add in more bass drums if and when I like. That's going to be pretty full on, but just for way of example. Pretty ridiculous, you probably wouldn't want that um, unless you're doing death metal or something like that. Um, but let's just bring this right back to uh, the basic rock drum beat, which is this. We've got some steady hi-hats along the top, and we're alternating between a bass sound and a snare sound. Let's just listen to that. And I forgot there was an extra little cheeky kick drum at the end there. That's your basic rock beat there. All right, pretty simple. Um, but what I'm gonna get you to do is to build these up from scratch. And I'm gonna try and relate it back to um, reading actual music for drums. So here you can see I've got a couple of um, drum charts or sheet music for drum kit. Um, the beats are counted out above. You might've heard this before. One, and two, and three, and four, and one. And so that would be one bar of music. Um, and the symbol along the top, this cross, actually means the hi-hat of the drum kit. Now if I go across now to 
um, no, sorry, rather, I'll scroll down. I've got a couple little diagrams that help you read um, the different parts of the drum kit onto sheet music. So, um, the round filled in dots are the drums. So think of a round thing as being a drum of a drum kit. And as you work your way up the stave, the sound gets higher. So at the bottom, obviously the bottom most sound we have is the kick or the bass drum, which is there and makes the big boomy sound. Next one up is the low tom. Our low tom or floor tom sits here. It's the next lowest sound and the next smallest dr drum, I suppose. Um, in the middle, we've got the snare drum here. Now it's called the snare drum because it's got snare wires on the bottom of it and it makes a rattly sound. Um, think of snare like a rabbit snare. Um, it's, it's a wire, yeah? So a snare drum has wires along the bottom of it to make a sort of rattly sound. Our next highest drum is the mid tom and then the high tom is the smallest of the drums and therefore it's the highest on our drum sheet music. Then we have the ride cymbal, which is usually your biggest cymbal of your drum kit. Um, and you hear that a lot in, in jazz. Um, they use the end of the stick a lot and you get the ting, 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 ting sort of sound on it. The hi-hat, which is actually two opposing cymbals, which can be either open or shut. When they're open, they make more of a psh sound. And when they're shut, they go t t t t t t Okay. And then a crash at the top here. So crash obviously sounds like a crash crash sound, right? So that gives you a basic idea of notation for the drum kit. Keep in mind again, there's the hi-hat. If I scroll back to our chart up here, we've got the hi-hat. So what I want you to do is have a go at creating a hi-hat in our song. So if I go back to our song, we've got drum machine A and drum machine B. What I want to do now is create a new pattern for C. So I click on C here and click Add C. Oh, make a beat before adding. All right, so I've got to add it first. I want hi-hat, which is there. If I mouse over, it'll tell me closed hi-hat. All right. Just notice I'm clicking every second one there. There we go. All right, so we have our closed hi-hat now. And I can pull this out to make four bars. Let's hear that. Yep, or if I'm counting as well, we'd have one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and just like our chart was indicating. So that now corresponds to that. Um, and that's the first thing I'd want you to have a go at, um, just so that I know that you understand uh, where to place these, how the beats are falling, and that you can create that in a drum machine. Okay. Um, one other thing to point out is you might have noticed that this grid is in shades and that's just to make it easier to see where we're up to. Obviously the white shade is where it's playing at right now. So you can, you can oh there we go, we got rid of it. I was gonna say you can sort of ignore that one. And on the beat, on the one and the two and the three would be the first line of that beat. So this is a beat. That one is landing on the beat. That one here is landing on the and. So we got one and two and three and four and. Okay, just to give you an idea of how the beats work. Now we're gonna make uh, the next drum beat, this one here. And basically it's the same, except we're gonna add in a bass drum there. It's the bottom most note on the stave, therefore it's the lowest sounding one. Let's have a go at that. So now we're gonna call it D. Um, we're gonna put our hi-hats back in. And we're gonna add a bass drum on one and on three, because that's beat one area. The darker gray there is beat two, and this is beat three. And if we go back to our chart, you'll see that our bass drum is landing on beat three. There it is. So we can play, oh no, we're gonna add D now, boom. Oh, I've added it in a funny spot. Let's click forward, let's try it again. There we go. And I can just, if I get my mouse in the right spot, I can pull that out and we get four bars of that. Yep, 
easy as that. And we're going to go on now and try this one. Now, this particular sheet shows the snare in a little bit of a funny spot, I will admit. Um, you might remember from our lesson here that the snare is actually in the space. On this other sheet music, they've put it on the line. Drum music can be a little bit like that, depending on the sort of kit that they're using. Look, don't worry about it too much. Just take my word for it. That is a snare drum. We're going to recreate this one with the snare drum on two and four. So let's have a look at that. We're going to create a new beat here. We're going to create E, put our hi-hats in again. Where's our snare? That's the mid-tom. There's our snare, so two and four. Let's play that. All right, cool, I'm happy with that. We're gonna click here just to put my little white bar where I need it to be and click add E. There she is. I'm gonna try and expand that out now. There we go. Let's play it up here. Stop now, stop, <laughs> all right. Okay, the next one we're gonna do is putting all that together. And this is the final one, and this forms a basic rock beat. So from this point on, you'll understand how a basic rock beat works. So we've got bass on one and snare on two, um, and then the hi-hat as normal. So let's go back, let's call this F. Let's put our hi-hats in. You'll be getting fast at this at this point. Our snare drum is this one here. Snare. Let's click add. And now we have our basic rock beat. Let's hear that. Perfect. That's playing it within the box or I can play it in our song. Outstanding. So in this lesson, you have learned a little bit about drum sheet music. You've learned a bit about drum machines in DAWs or digital audio workstations. And you've learned how to plug in notes into your digital audio workstation so that you can use um, beats in your music. You can compose your own beats now. You've also learned that you can um, change the drum kit assigned to that to get perhaps a dubstep kit or whatever sort of kit that you would like. And you can see how different that can sound. All right, your turn to have a go at that now. Uh, good luck.